Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be part of this tribunal, and I just want to thank all the organizers for doing this really, really critical part of the work that our movement needs to do, and that is to make sure as much as possible that the truth gets out. I just want to say a few words uh, based on my experience, I was the national coordinator for United for Peace and Justice. Uh, I, in fact, was one of the people that founded the coalition before the war in Iraq even started. Um, we all knew that this war was coming. That was one thing about Washington um, and powers that be in Washington, D.C. They made it clear that this war was coming. Um, and so, like people all around the world, we were outraged. Um, why go to war? What was this about? And it was clear to anybody who had their head screwed on straight, anybody who was listening and had their, their eyes open, that the Bush administration and the powers that be in Washington were, were just making things up about why they were going to war. Uh, Saddam Hussein was a brutal dictator. Well, that might have been true. Um, that, um, that he and his regime were a danger to the region. Well, who knew that? That his regime had somehow supported the people who had attacked the United States on 9-11 which was totally not true. There was never any evidence of that. Um, that they were about to produce nuclear weapons. No evidence of that. In fact, years later, that became, became clear that it was a lie. So it was lie after lie after lie. And I think for many of us, we knew that these were lies. We kind of first knew in our heart and in our guts. We didn't have the hard facts. Um, but we knew that they were lies partially because the reasoning to go to war kept changing, and partially because we knew a little bit enough about U.S. history uh, to know how many times lies had been put into place in terms of foreign policy and you, the use of military force, and even in terms of domestic policy right here at home. Uh, but we very quickly became part of an international movement, a global movement, the likes of which I don't think anybody had ever seen. I mean, it was truly phenomenal. So we held on to some hope that, in fact, maybe by the millions, tens of millions of people crying out for this insanity to stop, to say, don't go to war, that maybe uh, we could halt it from happening. Um, let me actually say one thing, a very important, critical moment in this whole process. February 15th in 2003, um, that day, Saturday, and to some degree on Sunday also that weekend, was a global set of actions. Uh, estimates are anywhere between 10 and 30 million people were in the streets all around the world. We here in the United States were obviously focused on, on the activity in the U.S., um, and in particular on a major demonstration that we did in New York City. And it was... I think really telling that the way both the, the city officials, the city government and police departments um, reacted to our requests or permits, that they, they denied us what we wanted. We wanted a permit to march and a permit to rally both in one day, not an unusual thing to do. And they said, no, 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 you can't do it. We went to court and we knew something was up when, uh, at the uh, at the lawyer's desk for the city, representing the city in the case, you know, in this in this uh, legal battle, there were representatives of the federal government, and again, that kind of reinforced to us that they didn't want the truth to come out. They didn't want people raising that demand of the U.S. government, of the U.N., of the gov governments of the world that the truth come out. They would do everything they could do to try and stop us. But I don't think the anti-war sentiment ever really went away. And I think part of what we did in that period was A, expose some of the lies, and B, remind people that in this country and around the world that telling the truth and being public and being in the public arena uh, and not being shy about that is a critical part of any process 
that they can lead to peace and justice and and any kind of reconciliation um you know on on a global scale and here at home as well that that starting with the truth is always the first place um the final thing that i would say is that our work is far from over the the lies about iraq about the middle east and about so much of the world continue every single day and while there are plenty of reasons to support some people running for office or some elected officials and to be angry about other people being elected, um, the truth of the matter is these lies have cut through many administrations and our work is never without meaning. It's never without importance and we have to be vigilant. I don't know what lies ahead. I don't know what the future for Iraq is, or for that region, or for the rest of the world for that matter. What I do know is that we need to be vigilant and visible.